Women Matters, and that's our first meeting in December 2023. Do you believe that the year is already over? We will have one more meeting probably, and then it's next year. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> we have met so many times this year. I, when I watched all this, um, the list of recordings, I said, is it possible that we <laughs> met so often? And I'm very grateful that you are here and also the ladies who are missing, but yes. still part of the group. So I'm really, really grateful for that. And we will see what topic will pop up today. And we start with uh, check-in. I see I'm dark here. I think I switch some light on, excuse me, but you start with check-in. Okay, well, I'll start with a check-in then. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm in this transition, it seems like. Um, all of a sudden I'm spending much more time alone. I don't have any projects or any commitments or any groups that I need to facilitate. And I've just had some travel. That was partly why I couldn't, oh my gosh, I had some big travel with um, primarily with family issues and family gatherings. And I'm just very glad to not have too much to go on. So I guess right now I had surgery a few days ago. So I'm sort of like this. I had a cancer right here. It's not mm -hmm. a very nice place to have a cancer. And have them dig in. It's Mohs surgery where they go and they go deep, and so you can you can't see it, but I can all the the bruising and everything because it's just beginning to heal. So I'm a little uncomfortable, but um, it's a good excuse to stay at home. <laughs> um, and I. I've decided to just kind of clear out things. So I guess if there was a theme, it would be, what can I get rid of? Mm. That's really, really in my heart. I think I long for simplicity and cleanliness, energetically cleanliness. And um, I think that's what the next couple of, couple of weeks are going to be about. And... Um, it's kind of humbling because when I open up one of these big categories, a big box full of paper, and I go, oh, my God, do I really have all that stuff there? And do I want to look at it? And then I kind of have to before I throw it away. And yeah. old taxes, and so, in other words, I don't like those details, but I'm making my, I'm here alone, so I've got to do something that's functional. So letting go, what to let go of. and. Um, how to bless that process, I guess. If I had a theme, that would be my theme. And Hanali, how about you? I love your I love your I love your hair. It's so interesting. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I wanted to get rid of the long hair for the summer. Because mm -hmm. I love to swim in summer as well. And then the long hair is just too much trouble to get a cap over your head at the public pools and the likes. It's very attractive. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Well, um, I'm Hanley. I'm here in Cape Town at the moment. And um, yes, I love what you just shared, Christine. I've been busy with the process as well, of a lot of releasing energetically, specifically, and also forgiving others that I felt did me wrong uh -huh. and releasing them and letting them go and doing some of the chills relating to that. Also a bit of decluttering myself. Not, I don't have much with me anymore, but still, just to synthesize wisdom and to get rid of clutter as well. And then I was really fortunate to listen to something beautiful last week. It was a meditation. Uh, the theme was about what happens in the womb between the sperm and the egg, and the and the role of the womb and the love of the mystery and the love of the universe that it must be part of that. And the, the topic was about loss, and it's also about letting go and death and impertinence. But it, <clears throat> but the, this gentleman who was leading this meditation was speaking about it from a 
from a bi biological perspective as well. So because he's a, he studied embryology and he did his PhD in that. And so he knows from a medical perspective what happens in the womb. But then he brought in the spiritual aspect of the love that the womb must accept this to happen. It can't just happen. You know, if you look at it even from a biological level, that there is that acceptance of the womb. But he, the, the meditation that he took us through was so beautiful. And the purpose of the meditation was for people who are struggling with perhaps uh, some diseases that's not curable or people who are close to, you know, in a high age and they worried about death, that that same energy of love must be present when you transition. And it was just so beautiful. It was just absolutely amazing as i'm sitting here you know i i just relive it again and so that was also beautiful with the letting go as well and if we can't come into flow in life with you know in synchronization with the flow of life if we also don't let go we can't just hang on because flow there's a letting go and there's a receiving part and like wave energy you know it comes and it goes but it was just beautiful now that you share about what must I can I get rid of? It just all fits together, you know. And then that ease to let go and uh, invite something new in, but also that space of universal love, mm. um, called universal love, unconditional love for something to birth, something new to birth after we've let go. So thank you. I'm completely now pass on to Christine West. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think I'm, now. <laughs> I'm uh, Christine in Carlsbad, California. And um, yeah, I think letting go might be a good topic for today because it is the end of the year. We're letting go of what was and looking forward to, to what's going to be. Um, I just told uh, my husband, Tom, yesterday, I said, well, when I'm in retirement mode soon, we're going to do Swedish death cleaning. I don't know if you guys know Swedish. No, what is death that? Cleaning. Well, they, before they die, they, uh, the parents kind of prepare their lives so that they're decluttering their lives so that uh, when they do pass away, their family is not stuck with a mountain of stuff that they don't know what to do with. So I don't know. You can Google Swedish uh, death cleaning. Um, but my daughter introduced that to me because she is kind of trying to lead a more minimal lifestyle, not not have a lot of stuff uh, in her life. And of course, at Christmas time, we're adding stuff in our lives in the form of gifts or experiences. Um, but, you know, this Christmas uh, with my kids grown, I'm I'm always so thankful that I don't have to <laughs> I don't have to jump through as many hoops um, as I did to make Christmas happen uh, in our household when when they were young. So I'm being more selective about what I what do I really feel like doing? What do I really want to do? Not what do I feel compelled uh, to do? So yeah, this year it's it's a um, smaller footprint in terms of what the holidays uh, will be and how much time. Uh, they're going to take up. Um, I'm almost done with my Christmas shopping and it's only December 4th. And that is like incredible, but that's partly because I'm not, I'm not doing as much perhaps as I did in other years, not as many people uh, involved. So that's good. Kind of letting go. I think I've mentioned it before and I'm sure I'll mention it many times again. I'm letting go of my office lease at the end of the month. So that'll be a big transition where I I uh, work less and that'll be fun, I hope. <laughs> kind of looking forward to it. So um, yeah, maybe maybe letting go is a good uh, topic for today. And Hanali, I love your hair. It just fits, it fits your personality. I don't know, yeah. it does for me, it does. Yeah. I think you nailed it by that word. It's like, it just, <laughs> Her personality just spreads out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll turn over to Heidi. Yeah, thank you. So as check-in, 
Yeah, I'm alone at the moment, at least for a month or a little longer, and then guests are coming, and we will see how, how life, life goes on. And this, this decluttering, that is a good topic. And what I'm also interested, why do I, do many of us, uh, cling to things? I'm very reluctant to let things go, because one day I might need it, you know? And then it has happened many times that I needed stuff and I knew I had it and then I didn't find it, you know, because <laughs> with all the stuff you don't know where you where you put it and so on. So for me it's a it's a good topic. Also, yeah, the end of the year, but we, we will meet before Christmas another time and so we might talk about the end of the year and Christmas holidays or something uh the next time. Okay. I'm, I feel fine. I had a wonderful coaching circus this morning and I talked about, I, I did the case. Um, I talked about getting older and, and satisfy the expectations of people, how you should behave in older age, or <laughs> do I do what I want to do? I mean, you know, that was my, my topic this morning. So you have any kind of an aha from that? Was there an insight that that interests me a lot too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, no, it uh, these 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 circles. These people give you Im the impressions, and one person uh, designed a nice uh, uh, design where I was in the middle of light, uh, but that was not me. But um, she said. She wanted to put me there, but it was not me, but it came out a butterfly and a spiral coming out of this uh, uh, and around your circus, but the spiral came out of this this circus and threw into this yellow, yellowish race everywhere around. And I, I like this <laughs> this uh, what came to her. So. Yeah, and uh, decluttering and these things also connected with age. I mean, you are saying this, Christine, both Christines. So yeah, good. Let's let's start. As I said, I'm interested. Why don't I? I have all my music here. Now these are books. Are behind. I have a huge wardrobe full of written music from time ago when I sang and. Yeah, if I found somebody who wanted to have these things, I would give it away immediately. But throw it away? Ah, that's really very hard. And so quick thought is, I have worked so hard for all these things, you know, and then throw them away. It's like devaluing the the effort and the energy I put in certain things. So maybe it's only the the mindset, I put the question to you. I think it is very much a, it is very much a mindset for me. They're what my thoughts are about these items. Um, I think that what I'm dealing with is similar to you. I don't want to look at those things. I don't want them to be in my, my visual sensitivity has really gone way, way up. And I want less stuff around to look at. So what I would wonder if I would you, have you got some place where you could put some things in boxes and they wouldn't be damaged, that they wouldn't have to be in your day-to-day -day life looking at them, that you can wait until maybe somebody comes along and you go, oh, it's for you. <laughs> there is somebody that maybe they would show up and... That's just the kind of story I'm playing with anyway. I'm not ready to pitch them. And there isn't someone to give it to now, but I do have a garage open space where I can put things. Maybe I'm very lucky with that. I don't know. Does anybody else have a place where you can let go, but actually don't kick it out the river completely? Christine, I just want to share with you, I because I've been a nomad for the last 10 years, I had storage, and uh, when I sold my house ten years ago, it's more than ten now. I I gave so many things away, and I and I really donated so many things, and I sold some stuff too. But 
I kept a few things. And every time I went through my travels, every time I went back to the storage unit, I felt that it was holding me back. You know, it was it was like an energy that, and it, it, it's still, the stuff is still there. It's just hidden. It's just not in my daily visibility, but it really helped me back. I felt it helped me back on some level. And that I wouldn't really spread my wings because of that, because it's always coming back to that place. But what I discovered through the years, <laughs> every time I went back there, I tried to to make it less. And when I gave up the storage, I think it was three years ago, two, three years ago, eventually you totally give it up. I was still surprised by how much was there. Now, I did, you have music. I have <laughs> workshop stuff <laughs> and stuff that I've written, but I haven't published it. Um, I could write tons of books because of all that stuff, literally. And on my, on my hard drives as well, I've got two external hard drives. And there's so many things on there. And sometimes I always think, why are you holding on to these things? Because it's, it's um, and I have started to donate some of those workshops to some communities and groups. And I never received any feedback back from them or how they experienced or anything. So, but I just let it go. I didn't need that, but I'm just saying. So I just let it go. But then there's still so much. And I also have to ask myself, but what are you hanging on to? Because it, you, it's all in here anyway. If you have to recreate it, it's very easy because you've done it so many times. It's not like it's, it's like a book that you've written a hundred times. You know, you, you know what's in there. You don't have to have the book because you know the content. So I have a question about why you cling on, we cling on to things. For me, it also relates to what you said personally, um, because I've put so much of my passion and my energy into it and gave me so much joy. And it's not even for me about devaluing my the energy, but it's it's like my treasure, you know, it was my gift to the world. So <laughs> it's hard to let go of it. And and then if I think back at times when I did do that, how something beautifully new came into my life. So it, it's like the paradox um, of letting go and, yeah, and then opening ourselves up to receiving. For me, it's not so much about a mindset. It's more for me about my connection to it. It's an energetic core to, to, from me to it. And I don't want to, I want to cut the cord, but I also don't want to sometimes. So it's a slow process. Because I've done the physical part already with stuff around me, so I can be completely mobile. This is now on a on a on a digital level. <laughs> it's still you no. Know, it's just another. It's just another form of holding on to it. And I don't think for me it's the thing about age necessarily, but it's I don't want to have clutter in my life anymore. I can't live with clutter anymore, mm. on whatever level. So it's it's. It, it is um, so. There's that desire in me as well, and I do th believe I can, you know, I can let go easily. But like I said, there's certain things that I value more, and it's harder to let go of. And I even had to think about the other about my daughter. Of, of really, um, you know, snipping the umbilical cord, <laughs> and. And we are very close, so it's it's really interesting that part because we are so close to because I can do it from my side, but her experience she always comes back when I do that, and she wants that she wants that type of it's a different type of relationship in a mother daughter it's more a soul to soul level, but um, I have wondered about many times if I just like cut that um, soul umbilical cord too to allow her really to spread her wings and I'm seeing she's doing it because I'm slowly pulling back. Not like like hectic, but slowly. And I can see the difference in her her coming into her power. So that's the beauty part of something like that. Thank you, I'm complete. Christine, other Christine? Um, I, I found it interesting that you called it treasure or your gift you know, to the world. That was a, a lovely expression, you know, I think to how we feel about what we've created in our lifetime, what we've contributed 
And I, the word that came to mind as Heidi was talking was um, sentimental. I mean, I think some people are sentimental and they do like to hold things because it's such a heart connection. Other people aren't sentimental and they do seem to uh, let things go a lot more readily. You know, they just don't feel that intense connection to things. Um, I've become less sentimental uh, as I've gotten older, mostly because I recognize I don't go back. I save things, but then I don't ever go back really and look at them. And I think someday I will. But the fact of the matter is <laughs> probably won't. So I've learned to be less sentimental about things. But I think it's, you know, especially when it comes to music or things that don't go out of style. I mean, the music doesn't, you know, it's not like scientific information that gets replaced with new scientific information or things evolve. Music evolves, but in some ways, those songs, Heidi, that you are familiar with and sang in the past, you know, they're they're just as viable as ever. So I think that's that's hard to figure out what to do with that. Um. I don't know. Letting go is, uh, I think, I think at, again, at this stage of my life, I'm letting go also of ideas that I used to hold for myself, what I might do in my lifetime or where I might go or who I might meet or whatever. And realizing, you know, my life is finite at this point, and it's not like I'm ready to go anywhere in particular, but uh, I hope I, I live many more years to come. But the idea of kind of endless possibilities, I'm, I'm letting go of that and coming to terms with uh, uh, the finalness of, uh, of our mortality. And what do I have to let go of um, that may never be? Uh, to be peace, to be at peace, uh, with life. Um, and what do I hold on to that will give me the energy and the soul and the spirit, uh, to keep living a valued life. So that's a, that's a big question. <laughs> it's, it's harder to figure out, takes more time, um, uh, to figure out that than how to deal with material things, but they're, con I see them as connected. I see them as very much connected. But yeah, letting go is a big, whew, it's mm -hmm. something we have to do all, all of our lives, you know, really from childhood on letting go of people that we've loved and things, stages of our lives. Yeah. That's interesting for me that you call this sentimental. It might be sentimental, but I remember times. Where, for instance, when I got married first with 19 years uh, old, I got gifts and I never liked them. And I still, I kept them because I thought I have a sort of obligation to the person who mm -hmm. gave it to me. So it's sometimes it's also a sort of a duty or sort of, a, I don't know how to call that, that you feel obliged to, to keep stuff which somebody gave to you. Like if I did a sacri sacrilege, you say, something uh, very unkind if I throw these things away. And it's, you shouldn't do that, you know, that's not, not good because you sort of hurt the honor of the other person in some way. That seems, when I talk about it, it seems weird to me, but I think there is something like that uh, behind. You give me a gift and I say, hey, nice, and I throw it away in the bin. <laughs> it just, it's strange. And uh, then I remember after, I don't know, 15 years, I finally threw away these uh, mugs and coffee pot, which I really did. <laughs> it took a long, 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 long time. Yeah, so I, I, I think we still have wedding gifts that have been up in the attic for, you know, decades, <laughs> decades, decades. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Attics, attics and garages and storage bins are are lethal for our spirits. <laughs> right? But do we really want somebody else to throw our stuff away? Then exactly. I think 
it, it, I feel dishonored when when I think somebody comes and says, "Oh, that you know, which I have created during my life." So that's really ooh, that what a tough. burden that could be for somebody else, right? If somebody likes it, it's good. But I cannot. I don't have the control on that. You know, if I leave everything as it is, and then. I'm gone and somebody comes, oh, this is good. Yeah. And the other ones, we throw it away. And if it was, for instance, a book or something which very dear to me, now I would say, oh, that's that's unkind towards me, you know? So <laughs> it's absurd. But I, I think, you know, I, th I think it's also the way we were raised. So I think it's also a conditioning and a belief system of, I don't know even how to call it, but I've I've learned from a, a great woman that never do something out of dark, duty, obligation, guilt. So if you're keeping it, for me, if I give something to someone, I'm releasing it. I'm letting it go. They can do with it whatever they want to. Because I'm gifting it to them. I'm letting it go. Otherwise, there will still always be a connection between me and that item and so on an energetic level i'm actually hooked to it if i give it away in that with that perception what are they going to do it and my lesson i learned with that was with my own mother she used to love to give us things that we didn't really like and at one stage i had a discussion with her so i would say i would say to her so i was open and transparent about it and i would say to her thank you for this but i hope you don't mind it's so beautiful it's really not my style. It doesn't fit into my environment. I'm going to gift it when somebody appears that might enjoy it much more than me. Do you mind me doing it? And in the beginning, I could see how she was thinking. You know, it's like the bells going off in the mind. And then later she realized how beautiful it actually is because she's passing it on. It's not just I'm putting it in a cupboard away and I'm never wearing it, for example, or doing anything with it. But I think, in Christine, you used the word minimalistic with your daughter. I think with 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 generation shifts, the, the millenniums, they they wanted less. Mm -hmm. They discovered what we were doing to the earth with our consumer behavior. They wanted to do less. Generation Z, Z, again, wants, it's over the top again. So it's a lot of stuff again. So it's like the generation shifts all the time. But I think that also where we're going towards life, where we are at life with the earth and everything, we become more cognizant of the amount of stuff we have. And I saw, I think we all saw it in 2020 that we could live with so much less because we couldn't move around freely and buy stuff. We just had the basics, for example. We learned that we could actually live with a lot, lot less. And a lot of the younger people at that time said that, they realized, well, why do I have to... You know, collect all this stuff. I'm never using it. And the other thing that I learned also a long time ago, really, from someone was, if you don't use it, lose it. Give it away to somebody who might need it and have a better use for it. And then that gave me peace so that when I did, did give something forward, I didn't feel bad because somebody can really do something with it. Whereas I will just throw it into the cupboard and it's hidden there in between all the other stuff in storage. <laughs> So I just think, I th so I think it's also a balance. But when you talk about, Christine, when you talk about uh, letting go, if you really think about birthing, if you have children, the birthing process is a lot about release. That baby must come out of you. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of letting go. It can't stay inside of you, otherwise you die. So there's a birthing we think is just something new coming in, but there's, just as big, uh, letting actually bigger letting go part for that to happen. So I think it's just how we've been conditioned that things gave we we gave value to physical things, for example, and even the way we measure wealth is how much stuff do you have, how much money do you have in the bank. So it's accumulation all the time, and your and our own worth is not about that, but that's how we've been conditioned, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So for me, it comes back to worth. What do we value? I agree with you. For me, the problem is to find somebody who would like to have the things I have and I want to give away, you know. There was a retreat um, here with uh, six or seven people 
and they helped me to uh, their karma yoga was to declutter the, uh, one of the storage rooms down there you know and uh, one found um, little baskets uh, and for me there was <laughs> throw it away you know oh no I would like to have it and so I was so happy that somebody took away some of the stuff, you know, and the rest went on uh, to the garbage. Uh, so with my music is, I would like to find somebody who needs it. But today everybody goes on internet and sees the things on the, but you know, I'm still of the idea. And as soon as we don't have an energy, electricity, and we don't have books, then we don't do anything. I mean, you know, uh, at least during the day, you could sing or play the, your instrument uh, out of a book during the day without needing anything. But the more you rely on the electronic stuff, the more you are also dependent on it. And for me, still having books, for instance, I really started to buy books because I thought it's something different that remains. I have a lot of audiobooks. I've bought a lot of audiobooks, but they are in the computer you know, mm -hmm. or on the phone or wherever. And uh, who knows, sooner or later, maybe you don't have it, the book, take it out, read it, you know. So I I also am very much in prevention uh, mindset. What happens if, and so I want to have prepared, not for all eventualities, but for as many as possible. That seems to be and the heritage of the after-war mindset of my family, that you need to, you know, take care that um, that you are prepared for when times get worse. And now times are getting worse, at least in Europe, and um, not yet so heavily, but it's very predictable, especially Germany. So who knows? <laughs> Maybe it's good that I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> well, in the States, there's a time-honored tradition of uh, garage sales. <laughs> so, and then people who want your stuff that you're willing to let go of and sell for, you know, garage sales that you do collect money for your stuff, but uh, it's it's minimal. And then you find out who might want your stuff, you know, who would like to have it. So I've done a lot of garage sales when my kids were growing out of their clothing and getting rid of toys and done with books. A lot of a lot of garage sales went on. Is is that something you do in South Africa or Europe? We don't do it in South Africa, but in New Zealand, from my, at my son, every week at the end of the street of you know of, the, of that block of the neighborhood. There's a specific day of the week you can go and put your stuff out there. And then on that day, everybody travels around and see what they want from everywhere. And then they can just take. So it's let's just take. There's no money involved. So it's not like garage sale. People do now and then garage sales, but it's not like in the US. Um, mm -hmm. It's not that type of culture, but um, it does happen now and then. But people sell a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace and online. Yeah. yeah. At second hand shops and online to sell stuff that they don't need anymore um so that happens a lot you know that happens quite a lot and you also get thrift shops where people just go and yeah. sell their clothes to and then they can buy again but i i just wanted to make a suggestion i don't know if it, i don't know why but the word conservatory came up when you were sharing about your music specifically you when you were saying who to gift it to your music and the word conservatory, music conservatory came up, you know, like, because it's, it's like, so valuable. It's, it, you know, it's so valuable for younger people, everybody who's, who's learning music um, and the likes. Something like that could possibly I, be an avenue. I, I had a, a, a teacher of a conservatory here, and he looked around and said he would uh, maybe find somebody, but he never did. So, you know, we need people to come here and see what it is because it's too much to bring there. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I already books. I, I have many German books. I brought them to the German church in, in Rome. Boxes for, because, you know, having a big house, 
uh, somebody died and a German person also living here in Italy, they brought me the books, my mother, the books for my mother. And so I had so many books, but nobody reads anymore. I mean, I had them in the guest apartments and somebody might have read, uh, read them, but <clears throat> at the end, it's too much. Um, so I already started in this direction, but I also did sort of garage sale um, uh, here on my ground, but there's only a few people coming. It's not so common. You can go to a market somewhere where they sell uh, antiques or something like this, but it's really, I never wanted to do that, all this work and going somewhere and then you have to pay for the stand and for the for the table and then you might not sell anything and stay there the whole day. So it's I'm not a, a vendor. I'm not a, a business person, not at all, you know, so. And I don't even want actually, yeah, if I get money, it would be nice, really nice, but that's not the point. The point is that I don't want to, not even, I have a friend, she said, oh yeah, you can give it to me, the music, and I make origami uh, things with the hand out of, of the pen. I said, mm, yeah, that would be the rest, uh, the very end of it, but because, you know, before I would like somebody, I mean, I've paid a lot of money of these uh, Italian opera uh, um, uh, books, you know, uh, Spartito, it is called in Italian, the printed music. This is books like this, you know, really. Uh, and they cost. So <laughs> I wouldn't like anybody to strap out the pages and do something with it. I really want somebody who, who says, oh, that's good. So I save some money, you know. So maybe somebody will listen to that and then tell me. But if I have to to send it to America, that's not a good idea, not even to South Africa. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> it costs too much. <laughs> no, it's not, not really. <laughs> but we can invite the universe to send somebody from around here somewhere. But you know, Italy is the is the country of Italian opera, but it's not anymore. So that's uh, all this culture is is going down the hill, so. Well, that's sad to know that. Yeah. I mean, some sometimes I love what you said, but there's a part of me that wonders as I get older, um, who I want to leave some some things I want to leave to someone. So I'm, I've actually done some photographs of things that I've, because of all the different cultures I've lived in, some of these things really have value. So I've taken photographs of them and then put them on thumb drives so that family members can look at that and decide what they want to do with it. I mean, that took a lot of energy to do that. So I think there's a big part of me that's sort of saying, not sort of, is saying, how do I want it to be if today was my last day? How do I want to prepare things if it is my last day? What goes out? So I really, I dislike the idea of leaving a burden for others. My mom did it, you know, and she wrote little notes on who would get what. <laughs> and then I mean, I wasn't there, I was out of the country, but then they would argue and say, well, I want that. And my brother, who's really a very strong person in terms of ethics, no, grandma said it goes to that person. Well, that person doesn't want it. There's somebody else who does want it, but there was the sergeant at Mars saying, no, you have to honor what grandma did. <laughs> so there's, I guess really what I am probably getting to is maybe the one of the things to let go of in addition to stuff is some of the beliefs that we carry and some of the emotional emotional default places that we go to the emotions that we go to the thoughts that we have i'm beginning to think and maybe this is something to talk about next time i suppose that letting go of that But anyway, I'm curious about it. I don't have any fabulous examples at the moment, but 
what I have been doing, and I'm just curious if you all have this in in Europe and in South Africa. Um, I've been watching some really good podcasts. I, that's where I get some of my best new info. Do others of you all do that? Because I just watched one this morning with um, a couple of people that were just, it was really powerful. And it's giving me new ideas. So if I'm going to have new ideas, I want to let go of some of the old ones, just to keep it simple. Um, am I crazy in thinking that that is available to you too? On the sure it is. It yeah. sure it is. I'm the whole, almost the whole day I'm listening to something because I'm very curious about, I have discovered my interest in, in uh, history and in backgrounds of the things which are happening now. And I want to know how they came, came about. And so I'm really starting three years ago, let's say, with this Corona thing, which I didn't quite understand. And then I dug deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and now with all these wars and so and I try to get as many perspectives as possible to to understand and especially understand the background so many things I didn't know about history that's incredible really I mean I thought we had history lessons at school but not really so Mm. I I'm very very much into that into listening and also into reading as I said books I buy a lot of books not much literature but these things to understand and to be able to look at it because with podcasts and audiobooks you have heard it and then you don't find it anymore in a book you can find it what you what you found important and and things yeah sure I don't watch television. I don't re read newspapers, uh, only on, some on the online editions, but not the mainstream ones. Sometimes I try and then I think, oh, no. And so, um, um, yeah. Oh, by the way, <laughs> about the censorship, you know, at the beginning of Corona, when I was still, you know, uh, believing that all this was true, I did uh, uh, some sessions which I called Corona Chats, you know, and there was for sure no dissident uh, thing from my part, which came much later, but, I, but then I, I didn't talk anymore. And it is canceled by YouTube. <laughs> me, canceling me, you know. With, uh, with <laughs> I thought, oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> How far have we got in our democratic system for with free speech that they're counseling me? Probably, I imagine that I have said something like uh, vaccination. I, I never took any vaccination, so why should I do that this time? That's Im I imagine that I have said that, you know? I don't know. And then they canceled it, the whole thing. <laughs> I don't know if in, in danger now to be cancelled also with this when I say things like that. It's so absurd in what times we are living and I really wanted to know how that came about and, uh, and the picture is forming, let's say, by podcast so far to me. Yeah. And we identify some that we can trust because we know what their ethics are. So then they come back and they have one new program a week but mm -hmm. I'm like you I have not had tv for 30 years and I haven't looked at a newspaper forever I don't think but I do get information mm -hmm. I, how, how, do you do, how do you determine if it's trustworthy information and not opinion um I guess because the few people who I do follow who I do seem to respect I've made an assumption that I'm comfortable with them. I'm trying to use my intuition and a few of the samples. And so that that really helps me. And some of these people have also written books. And so I've taken a look at their book. Mm -hmm. And I feel pretty, I choose to feel safe. And that may be, that may be wrong, but um, most of it has to do with letting go of um, how we think and they're not telling us how to think or feel, but letting go of anything that's not 
bringing more love or goodness into the world. Yeah. My my technique to understand if I can believe a person is uh, when I see that they are getting counseled, that I, they're getting, um, how do you say, uh, uh, aggressively attacked, uh, their, their reputation when they lose their job because they speak out and things like that. Then I think if a person is willing to 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 risk uh, this, these things, then the things she or he has to say is important and is, is the truth because otherwise why would anybody care and bother about a person if it was shit, you know? <laughs> So when they uh, there are a lot of of uh, also medical doctors for, from the beginning they said something about corona they get uh, th um, their professorship they want to take it away and uh, there were now in Germany um, uh, um, judge uh, how can you say sentences for people who have given. Um, uh, to people documents that they cannot wear a mask and they go to prison for that because things like that. And then, you know, so when they uh, say the why they did it, then I think if they risk this, their own lives, their own profession, their own career, you, then I prefer to believe to them than to scientists who are paid by the big industry. So that's for me the the calculation whom to listen to and and rely to and trust. Yeah, that's beautifully put. Yeah, clarity there. Thank you. And you know, when we are in the topic of letting go, I had to let go when during this process of the in gen ingenuous belief that our governments work for us and will have our well-being at heart that i have completely to let go i really was so so um how do you say naive to believe that we are in democratic states and that it's uh, all about us and that we can uh, uh, participate and uh, you know and our, our well-being is uh, politics will uh, do things for our well-being and no that was a falling out of <laughs> out of the sky in some way to this recognition that it's not about us it's about power and money and we are sort of the soldiers or the guinea pigs or the uh yeah you know the the peasants on the chessboard. We are those, and mm. when they don't need us, you know, I mean, in Ukraine, the real soldiers go, uh, no, because somebody is playing a power game. So that was a really big, big thing to let go for me because it was destroying all my. Um, feeling safe in, in society, let's say, in, in our world. But it's, I prefer now to know what is going on in the world. At least I know, also it's not nice. I don't, I don't want to continue to be, to live in this illusion and if this mind um, constructed good world. I'm. The idea we can create a better world, that's yes, but what is going on now, really not good, in my opinion. So, so thank I'm, you. I've talked too long. <laughs> curious, How is the view from uh, South Africa? <laughs> yeah, I'm curious that others, if you have, because really what I'm translating is ultimately not feeling safe and getting used to not feeling safe. Or, and I'm curious of you, about you, Hanali, because I think you're very optimistic. Yeah, but I, you must also remember, I grew up in a country where we never felt safe. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so for us, so we are desensitized to those things because we we grew up with it. So 
we never trusted the government anyway because of what happened here and people making decisions in your name on your behalf um, which you don't agree with but you can't control it because it's just how, how the systems work so for us i think it's i can only speak for myself obviously but i think in general is we don't we i, I didn't have to let go of something like heidi had to because i never had it mm. because even as a young girl i didn't trust the church the government I already could feel then something is odd here, something is wrong here, although because it was way before television and the internet and things like that. So we didn't have act and because the world, you know, we were cut off from the world for so long, because of apartheid, we didn't know what was going on in the rest of the world. So it was kept from us. So I I my body learned how to I think that's that's a part of my sensory abilities, is because I'm so visceral is that my body started to sense when something is off. It's not to say that it's wrong or bad, but it's off. It's not aligned. There's something going on here. And then I would become curious about what is this about. So there's a curiosity. So I think in terms, even when I traveled all over the world as a woman alone up in Africa and everywhere, I was never feeling unsafe because I came out of a place where my my definition of safety was most probably different from when you grew up in Europe, for example, or in the US. Exactly. Um, so so the context is different. But I just sort of quickly before I continue that, I just quickly went back to the book things, your book things. I've had the most amazing experiences during some of my travels. When and in those days it was way before Airbnb, when you would get into a guest house and there are books in the room, or at least in the lounge. And I remember a place here in South Africa where I went for a weekend. And I had to row across the river to get to this place because there was no roads to that place. It was wow. really very adventurous. And it's a huge river, and the river goes into the sea there. So it's quite hectic because you've got the waves coming in and, this, and the river coming down. And I arrived right like, like at dusk, so it was almost getting dark. And then I discovered in this beautiful guest house, it was not luxury at all, but it was just everything was there that I needed. And I was alone. But the books, there were books that were written in the early 1900s. I, I was just absolutely stunned. I, you could never find them in a library or online or any. They're all out of print anyway. But they had such an impact on my own awareness, and my own development and, and uh, discovering about life. That was just treasures. So I wanted to say to you, if you really want to give your books to, give it to such places where people can access the travels, you know, because somebody will re get to a book and they will really value it. And it might just be what they need at that time. Like I did those books that I've discovered there. This is really something that I really needed. And at that specific place, you could actually take the book if you wanted to. So, you, you, you know, it was like... Um, um, these bars where you can put money if you take a beer or something. I, can't, I don't know what you call them, but it was a similar process like that. In, in South Africa, we also have, in some of the big parks, the beautiful uh, nature reserves and things, they've got little boxes. And then there's books in it. So if you enter the park, you take your dog for a walk or you go for a walk, you can actually take a book out of there and you can take it home. And again, there you find the most incredible books. It's just magical because for me, books are different. It's not like other stuff. There's wisdom in it. There's, and music is the same for me. It's like you said, other Christine, it's the same. Um, I, don't value, I don't put them in the same bracket as other just stuff, physical stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I just want to mention that. Yeah, I think it's really incredible what can happen if we leave. And I, when I was in Italy at, at the um, place where we had our event, there were also books like books there that we could access. Obviously, most of them were in Italian. So yeah, that's not, the problem. Yeah, they don't yeah, want yeah. German books. <laughs> <laughs> but but if but if it's but but all I'm saying is that it it can really mean something to somebody who, yeah. who might just need it at a specific time, a moment in time, because books are for me timeless. You know, it's it's be in the same yeah. with music. Yeah. As for the letting go part of 
of of um, government structures and things like that. Authority. I've I've given letting go of that long time ago. I always saw myself actually acting outside of the normal mainstream environment in terms of that. So it's not something that I had to let go of lately because of what was happening and what already happened for me a long time ago where I call me the rebel. I was just, I never saw myself in, as far inside of it, so to speak. So it never really was a threat to me because I wasn't, I didn't see myself as part of it. Maybe because of the way we grew up and because we saw what was happening. And, we, and there were so many things that happened that we were not even aware of. We only discovered it also later. And then you were getting blamed for it because of your parents' generation and young older generations and the likes. And that felt heavy. So I think that's why we perhaps um, approached that in a different way. Yeah. And I can only say this uh, uh, at the beginning, it's a real big, 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 big shock. And then after a while, Ken Wilber said, uh, hurts more, bothers less. When I hear all these things which are happening now, yeah, I'm sort of concerned, uh, but it, uh, I already know that. It's not anymore this where you are without, uh, don't know anything. At the beginning, it was like this, uh, how, how can that happen, you know? And then now I listen to it and want to know, understand, and I feel very, 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 very sorry is not the right word, uh, very much with these people uh, who are suffering and getting killed from all parts of, you know. I don't take parts for one or the other and say this is right and this is wrong. No, killing is wrong always, you know, but not who who has the right to do that. And so I never do that, but I can see it somehow from outside now. But it took me about two years to to arrive at this point of let's say equanimity, uh, which is not absolutely that, but it's not anymore so upsetting completely as it was at the beginning. And I really do understand when people don't want to go there, because it's really hard. The beginning when the illusions fall apart and you understand how this world is, um, how can you say, kidnapped by a few powers and very few people, I mean, in comparison to how many we are. Um, it is hard to go through, but you, you come out on the other hand, on the other end, and, and then I think it's better to know what you are facing than to just box <laughs> somewhere <laughs> and don't know where to, where to direct your, your fists, you know, so. That's very wise because that gives you the choice to feel more peaceful. Yeah. Inside. Yeah. I'm still, when I hear some other atrocity, it's still touching me, you know, but uh, it's not anymore this completely feeling so laid down, betrayed by life or something, which it was at the beginning. Because when your illusions break off, that's, that's, it's not nice, <laughs> not at all. Christine, other Christine, what what about you? Well, I was just going to say, I've, uh, speaking of letting go, I'm going to have to head out. I got to go. I got to be at work in a little while. But uh, yeah, to, I don't know. I I was thinking that um, you know, integral uh, theory teaches us that everything has a, a portion of the truth. I mean, mm -hmm. there it's not mm -hmm. so black and white that you can't see some truth in pretty much everything. But so I try to keep that perspective, but I, I get it that it's, uh, you know, we've all become disillusioned over the years about who we think is acting in our behalf or who has the um, the idea of what's best for humanity uh, in mind. Yeah. Money, money, money. Exactly. That's it. We should let go of money, but unfortunately, we still need it. Uh, too bad. Yeah, I wish you a good day, and we meet in two weeks again. <laughs> I, I have two doctor's appointments that day on the 18th, so I will see you. You'll have to let us know if we're going to meet on New Year's Day or not, because the following two weeks is New Year's Day. Would we meet that day or, or wait a week? 
for me it's fine we will see i just uh, switch off the recording because this is not so important for people okay uh stop recording yeah <laughs> ciao ciao yeah, it's okay for me